Well, well, well. Good evening, all my homos and bitches. How are you? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late. I uh, didn't see the time. <laughs> no, no, no. The real reason why I'm a bit late is a bit more embarrassing than that. I was uh, I had a bit of an accident on the way. I was walking along the road, and I ran straight to this massive pole. I can't remember his name. <laughs> But anyway, I'm here now. The best, the worst, the only blind stand-up comedian. If there's any others, I've never seen them. In a change to the podcast schedule for tonight, the other lad that was supposed to turn up to tell you a few gags, the other blind guy, uh, he won't be turning up. He's just been hit by a bus on that Twitch road. They don't know what caused it, but they reckon his gag dog saw a cat. <laughs> a few years back, I noticed a very, very small patch of vision that I was on was starting to disappear with the rest of it. So uh, I went to the old doc about this, he took one look at me and he said, <clears throat> Oh yes, Mr Spencer, I'm very sorry about this, but uh, this is a very, very natural progression of the condition you have, and you're going to lose the rest of your sight as well. And I said, oh, come on, Doc, this is no time for a line-up. He says, no, 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 I'm serious. I would never lie to you about this. And I was a bit, a bit stunned, and I said, well, I want a second opinion, Doc. And he said, okay, you're going stone blind and you're a prick. <laughs> I said, I'm Doc. He said, not very well known fact this, but um, before I was blind as a bat, I uh, almost had a career as a professional football player. I could have been the next Pele. In fact, I was chatting with an old mate about this the other night, and he said, Do you know what, Jack? Your skills on the pitch, mate, you remind me of Louis Suarez. I said, oh, thanks, you mean I was a great striker? I said, no, you're a bad-tempered little shit. <laughs> but anyway, I was, I was, uh, I was in, the, uh, in the local, back in Morecambe the other night, and the uh, Morecambe football team walked in for a post-match pint. And I got chatting to one of the lads that played for the team, and uh, I was explaining all this to him, and he couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, I was, I was almost a professional footballer, mate. He says, you all, we're not all lined up. I said, no, I'm serious. He says, but no offence, you're blind. I said, well, fucking hell, mate, that's what telling me. I thought I'd been in a power cup for the past 23 years. <laughs> and he says, no, but seriously, you know, to play football, you know, you've got to have good visual coordination. I said, well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I had this special football which had a bell in it. And all you have to do is kick it and listen for the jingling and you knew exactly where it was. And he says, oh really, that, that's amazing. What, what went wrong with your career? I says, well, it was all going so well, you know, and uh, one day we went to Blackpool Pier for a practice kick around, and uh, I kicked the living daylights out of a Morris dancer. <laughs> I'm going from one awkward situation to another now. Uh, the other week, I decided to try out this new Chinese takeaway around the corner. And I walked in, and if I'd been able to read the menu, then this wouldn't have been a confusing thing whatsoever. But I walked up to the counter and I said, all right, mate, can I have a, can I have a sweet and sour chicken? And he said, certainly, sir, would you want Cantonese or balls? I said, I beg your pardon. <laughs> he says, well, there's two ways you can have it. You can have Cantonese or you can have balls. I said, oh, right, out of sheer curiosity, I said, balls. That was one dinner I didn't want to find a hair in. <laughs> Blind people and dating. Now this is a very interesting one because it is a well-known fact that uh, I've got a bit of a taste for the women of the, the larger variety. Anyway. And my mates often ask me, come on Jack, what is it? What would you find so attractive about big girls? And I say, well come on, I need something I can find in the dark. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about one such female. 
quite on this date was. Ironically, it was a blind date. And this, this girl's name was Marcy, which was a very appropriate name for her. Because if, re if you remove the M, that's what people said she looked like. And if you change the C to a D, then that's what she was like at the time, very moody. She was a big girl, not very bright. She took me on a surprise date once. We turned up at the cinema. So, after I walked through like the point and everything, I spent 25 bloody quid on popcorn and all this bollocks. Anyway, we're finally getting to the picture house, so I thought I might as well get my money's worth. So we're on the back row. I'm thinking to myself, I'm just going to wait for this film to start, all the magic music to start going all that, then I'll turn around and give the old Dr. Spencer treatment. <laughs> anyway, 45 minutes went by, and I'm getting a little bit impatient. I turn around to her and I says, hey, should this film have started by now? Shh, she said. I said, what do you mean? Shush, I'm only asking you, mean we've been in here now. Shh, you're ruining the good bit. <laughs> I says, what are you talking about? The film was like, shut up! There's always the nosy Parker, isn't there? That has to stick his nose in. Well, this was no exception. Nosy Parker up right in front, turns around, looks at me and he goes, Oi, have you never heard of a silent movie? <laughs> Knock it off, yeah. <laughs> now, at this point, I lost my temper. Some people said it was blind fury. <laughs> and I waved my stick under his nose. And I says to him, I tell you what, mate, you talk to me like that again and I'll knock you off. <laughs> and his response was, <laughs> oh really? How are you going to manage that, you blind prick? <coughs> and I said, you can rest assured now that it'll be a stab in the dark. <laughs> well anyway, then the, uh, then the dead pipes up, don't she? Oh Jack, stop causing a scene. Cause a scene, I said. Cause a scene. What fucking idiot takes a blind man on a blind date to a silent movie, you thick bitch? <laughs> oh, fuck off, she said. So I did. Walked off and left her there. It took me three days and a phone call to find my way out of that cinema. <laughs> When I finally got back to the to the you know the front pavement, I was in a foul mood, bruised and battered emotionally and physically. And I walked into a bar. That didn't help, it broke my shin as well. But I was in this I was in this pub over the road from the cinema and uh, having a few jars of uh, Stella Artois, you know, to uh, numb the pain of the evening. Well, I was half cut and this this girl walks up to me. I have no idea if she was good looking. Probably got chatting and uh, turns out she's a bit of a wine expert. And I just so happened to have a few bottles of vintage back at the old palace. So I says, why don't you pop back to mine while I'll do a wine tasting session? So she was up for that. So anyway, we moved back to, uh, back to the ranch. And we're in, we're in the kitchen. And she said to me, right, Jack, I've got a bottle of wine here. I'm going to pour you some. And you've got to tell me what you think it is. I said, go for it. She says, well, haven't you got any glasses? I said, I'm not being funny, but even if I did, I couldn't read that label from me. <laughs> On a final note, this is a bit, a bit more of a serious one. What's this about black people being a racial minority? I mean, I've never seen a white man, or a white woman for that man. Not everyone I've ever seen is black. In fact, let's, let's, just, let's just solve this one now. Let's have a show of hands. Who's white in here? There you go, none of you. <laughs> so then, yeah, people can be uh, a bit offensive at times, and they, they try and tell me, um, just because I can't, you know, tell them any different, they try and tell me that I'm white. I'm like, no, come on, you know, don't, don't wind me up, don't wind me up, I'm not black. Now, Jack, you've got to stop this, mate, right? You're, you're a white male, all right? You've never been black. I said, now listen in, all right? I'm black, live with it. If you want to call me a racial minority, I'll be the majority of your problems. I'm like, Jack, no, but serious, mate, you, you're not black. You're not black, you're white. And I said, listen, mate, my mother would never have lied to me about something like that.
And I think that concludes the first half of the show. So uh, thank you. Thank you.